Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Maggie. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm -hmm. Some girl I know has low ideas and high finance, and she's come up with one now where she may make a killing. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risked their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Deadly Dame. It's late afternoon in New York, and in the booth at Chico's, a young man named Johnny Fremont nervously toys with his drink while waiting for his light of love. And then when she appears, it's obvious the light annoys her. There you are. Rita. I'm surprised you showed up, Johnny. I didn't think you'd have the nerve. What are you talking about? I was just shopping at Lawson's. They told me Miss Rita Devlin's charge account has been closed. Oh, well, uh, I, uh, I can explain that, honey. You'd better. Would you like a drink? Later. You sure? Chico makes a martini Quit that... stalling, Johnny. Well, it's, it's like this, Rita... Things haven't been breaking so hot for Steve and myself lately. What do you mean, things haven't been breaking so hot? Well, this oil deal we were supposed to handle didn't pan out. But things will pick up. We're working on a proposition now well, it that... it was we'll... nice knowing you, darling. Where are you going? Home and pack. No, you can't. Can't I? Well, watch. No, I won't let you go. Get your hands off me. Darling, darling, listen to me. What for? I did that once, and what did it get me? I left my husband because of you and your promises... Well, if this is the way you're Keaton... You've got to give me a little time, just till this deal gels. Okay, when it does, give me a ring. No, I won't let you go. I couldn't live without you. That's very touching. I mean it. I'd do anything in the world for you. Anything? You know that. All right, we'll see. Suppose I showed you how to put your hands on $100,000. What would you say to that? I, I'd say you were out of your mind. How big is that partnership policy you and Steve Morgan carry on each other's lives? A hundred thousand, but... But what? Well, it doesn't become payable unless one of us dies. Well, why not work on it? Suppose Steve had an accident. An accident? Yeah. So he'd be fatally injured. But how could that happen? We could make it happen. If Steve were murdered... Murdered. Shut up, you fool. You want people to hear? I'm sorry. What am I right? If anything happened to Steve, that money would go to you. You don't know what you're saying. I'd be the first one they suspect. Why? Because of the policy. Who else would have a motive to kill him? Suppose it looked like somebody was trying to kill you. Oh, and you're you... not making don't sense. Don't interrupt. If someone made an attempt on your life and Steve got in the way of the bullet, that would leave you in the clear. You know, you know you had me worried for a while? What? I didn't know you were joking. Don't be a schmo. I was never more serious in my life. But you must be. Who would want to kill me? Well, I would if you don't start using your head. 
Why couldn't George be after you? George? My husband. After all, you did take me away from him. He's probably real annoyed. Who would believe it? Everybody, if you set it up right. All you have to do is go on record that George is after you. How could I do that? Oh, there's a million ways. What's wrong with a threatening letter? You show it to Steve and he spreads the word around. Then when something happens to Steve, it all adds up. Oh, you're crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. Then you certainly don't want me around. No, wait, wait. Make up your mind, Johnny. I'm not going to wait forever. Suppose I promise I'm you... I'm through with promises. Do we or do we not sit down and compose a letter for my husband for you to show to Steve? Listen, Rita... Do we or don't we? All right. That's my baby. Now, let's go over to my place. Get to work on the typewriter. Who's there? Who's there? It's only me, Johnny. Who'd you expect? Don't ever do that again. Oh, what's the matter, boy? You got the jitters? No, but when I ask who's there, I, I expect an answer. Hey, what's come over you? You're shaking like a leaf. I'm all right. Come on, you can tell your old sidekick. Listen, Johnny, if you're in a jam, I want to help. You're right, Steve. I am in a jam. Huh? My life's been threatened. What? Take a look at this. Dear Mr. Fremont, although I've never had the pleasure of meeting you, I understand we have one interest in common. I refer, of course, to Rita. Like you, Rita has always had a fatal fascination for me, and I swore if a man ever took her away, he'd pay with his life. Naturally, I'm looking forward to claiming yours. Sorry I missed you in Tijuana. Cordially, George Sales. Who's he? Rita's husband. But I thought her name was Devlin. That's her maiden name. Steve, what am I going to do? You're going to forget it. It's a rib. No, it's from her husband, all right. Who else would know that I met Rita in Tijuana? Oh, it could be any number of people. Name one. All right, even assuming you're right. What makes you think he isn't pulling your leg? Does this look like it? What the devil do you call that? What does it look like? Offhand, I'd say sugar. Well, it's arsenic. Arsenic? Where'd it come from? I ordered some coffee sent up this morning. Yeah? I don't know what possessed me, but I tasted the sugar first. Then I noticed the metallic flavor. Hey, you're right. You gotta report this to the cops. Oh, no. Rita doesn't want me to. Listen, Johnny. I wouldn't ordinarily say this. Just because we're partners, I figure don't give me a license to butt in your private affairs, but uh, there's an easy way out. How? Get rid of Rita. What? I don't want you to take offense, boy, but look, she's no good. Steve, I'm going to surprise you. You're absolutely right. Well, then why in heaven's name are you... I hanging? can't help myself. I know it sounds corny, but I couldn't get along without her. Every time she's threatened to leave me, I felt like it was the end of the world. Look, kiddo, you've got to pull yourself together. It's no use. I can't give her up. And you won't go to the police? No. Well, then, I... wait a minute. i got an idea. i got a pal named Mike Warren. Who? Mike Warren. He's a private detective. Is he the one they call the Falcon? Yeah. You're going to have a talk with him. No. Now, don't be a fool, Johnny. It's the only way. But Rita wouldn't want... She don't have to know. Listen, Steve, maybe we're jumping to conclusions. Maybe you were right in the first place. Huh? Maybe it's a rib, like you said. Don't be a fool, boy. That arsenic's no joke. Someone's out to get you. But you don't understand... I understand I... you need protection, and Mike Warren is the one to supply it. Now, quit arguing and get your coat. That's a story, Mike. What do you think Johnny ought to do? Let's see that letter again. Here. When did you receive this, Johnny? Wednesday. Where was it mailed to? Well, can't you see from the envelope? It was sent to my hotel. Now, look. You'll fella. have to excuse him, Mike. Naturally, Johnny's upset. He didn't mean nothing, did you, pal? I'm sorry, Warren. You say you received this letter this past Wednesday? Yes. That was April 2nd. Well... Well, how come the letter's postmarked April 5th? Well, I, I, I guess I forgot. 
Come to think of it, it, it was Saturday. Well, that's a funny kind of mistake to make. Well, I've had a lot on my mind. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. What's the matter with you, Mike? You sound like you don't believe him. All I can go by, Steve, is my own experience. I've seen a lot of threatening letters in my time, and it's amazing how few of them are signed. His girlfriend's husband seems to go out of their way to incriminate himself. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Did you notice the signature? What about it? It's typed like the rest of the note. Now, you'll have to admit that's fairly unusual, too. Most men can muster enough strength to pick up a pen. What are you getting at? Well, any one of these things alone might not mean anything, but when you add them all together, you're forced to one conclusion. What? This letter is a phony. You're crazy. And I'll let that pass. Look, Mike, be reasonable. Who would do a thing like that? Oh, there are a couple of possibilities. Could be the work of a crank, or then again... Yes? It could be yours. What do you mean? Well, it just occurred to me, Johnny, that uh, you might have typed this note to yourself. Are you calling me a phony? Take it any way you like. Why, you no good... Now, take it Cut easy, it out, fella. Johnny. Let me go. Cut it. Come on, now, Johnny. Behave yourself. Did you hear what he called me? Yeah, yeah. Now, look, Mike... I think you owe him an apology. I don't see why. Uh, leave us alone, Johnny. No. Go on now, pal. This is between us. You trust me, don't you? Well, yeah. Well, then take off. Okay. I'll meet you at Readers later. Fair enough. All right, Mike. What do you got to say for yourself? I thought I said enough already. You realize you call my partner a liar? Oh, what's the matter with you, Steve? Can't you see it yet? If I will get you ten, he mail that letter to himself. Uh, just give me one good reason why a man should do that. Well, that's what bothers me. There isn't one good reason. So? So I'm convinced there must be a dozen bad ones. Let me know if any of them develop. That you, Johnny? Yeah. Open up with you. Hiya, doll. I was wondering what happened to you. Give me a drink. What's the matter? I need one, that's all. Oh, what happened? Everything. It's all loused up. Oh, you stupid. Honey, it wasn't my fault. I, I did everything the way we planned. I showed the letter in the arsenic to Steve. So? So it developed Steve has a friend who's a private detective. We went over to see him. You did Steve insisted. Now, I suppose if Steve insisted, you'd blow your brains out to oblige him. Rita, you don't understand. There was nothing else I could do. If I was worried about my life, wouldn't I naturally try to protect myself? So we went over to see this Mike Waring. Go on. We weren't there more than a couple of minutes when he spotted the whole thing for a phony. How? He tied me up on the note. Oh, you idiot! Rita, I couldn't help myself. I got rattled. And then there were a couple of other things, and... Well, to make a long story short, I tried to take a poke at Waring, and Steve broke it up. Well, that's just fine. Where's Steve now? Still with Waring, but he's, he's due here any minute. What about this man you hired? What about him? Oh, we've got to call him off. If we don't... It must be Steve. What'll I do? Well, the first thing is to pull yourself together. Look at your hands. I can't help it. You bet. Uh, Rita. Don't read on me. Can't you be a man for once? Go on, get it. I'm going to powder my nose. Just a second, Steve. Hiya, Mac. This Rita Devlin's apartment? That's right. Yeah, well, I got a little job here. Well, who are you? Oh, you might call me an exterminator. Well, will you come back later? Miss Devlin's very busy. Yeah, I'm kind of busy myself. Yes, but you can't do any work while there are people in the apartment. Oh, that's the only time to do it. So if you don't mind, I'll get right down to business. Huh? What's the idea of the gun? I told you I was an exterminator. But I, I, I yeah, thought you meant... everybody does. Oh, look, you got this all wrong. You're, you're looking for Steve Morgan. You'll do. But you don't understand. Steve isn't here yet. I'm Johnny Fremont. We were just going to call you. you. You made the trip for nothing. Well, just so won't be a total loss. No! <laughs> Along about this time of year, we start to see the first signs of spring. Birds are beginning to sing, the first flowers are blooming, and youngsters will be playing out of doors. 
But there's one sign of spring that warns of danger instead of happiness ahead. Spring also means increased highway traffic, and heavier traffic means more accidents. Yes, that's just as sure as the changing of the seasons. So this is a good time to think about your own safety on the highways. First of all, why not check on your car and make sure it's in safe driving condition? Look at the tires, the windshield wiper, the brakes, the lights, and other safety equipment. But remember, even a car in perfect condition isn't safe unless it's driven carefully. Resolve now not to drive too fast, to stay on your own side of the road, to obey traffic laws, and to observe traffic signs and signals. Never drive after drinking. Be alert every moment behind the wheel. Yes, spring is here, so be sure you stay alive to enjoy it. Drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Johnny Fremont met the friendly exterminator in Rita Devlin's apartment. And now at Mike Waring's. Hello? That you, Mike? Yeah. Steve Morgan. Oh, look, Steve, if you're calling about Johnny Fremont... It so happens I am. Did you talk to him? No. Well, when you break him down, you'll find I was right. I wouldn't make book on that. Well, I would. I've got a hundred bucks here. You better hold on to it, or you won't be eaten. Johnny was just murdered. He what? You heard me. Well, then I was wrong. Doesn't seem possible, does it? You tell a guy he's got nothing to worry about. Three hours later, he's pushing up daisies. Where did it happen? Over at his girlfriend's apartment. Rita Devlin's? That's right. Where does she live? At the Cherokee Arms. Well, I'm going over to see her. I wouldn't. I know I let you down, but I'd like to make it up to you. And who's going to make it up to Johnny? Oh, listen, I Steve... listened to you once before, Mike. It was kind of expensive. So if you don't mind, I'll hang up now. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marion. I'm glad you called. I'm sorry, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some boy just came to see me with a proposition I couldn't possibly turn down. If we work it right, it may mean a killing. <laughs> Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Handy Helpmate. It is late afternoon in New York, and at the Miramar, a cheap hotel on the Bowery, one citizen finds release from the cares of the day. But the sound effects annoy Chuck Lewis, and when Chuck is annoyed, he does something about it. All right, Tony. Get up. Uh, Let me alone. Come on, Bum. Get out of my room. I ain't bothering anybody. You're bothering me. That you, Willie? Yeah. Where the devil have you been? I just went out with some air. Oh, you just went... Well, what are you hanging around for, Tony? I told you to get lost. Someone would think you own a joint. What did you say? Nothing. He's a wise guy, that Tony. I wouldn't let him get away with it, Chuck. No? What would you do? Well, what's the matter, pal? Everything rubs you the wrong way. Yeah, maybe this will make you feel better. Where'd you get that bottle? I got friends. You raise any dough? No, I never saw such a bunch of tight wads in my life. Come here a second. Huh? I said come here. Now, look, Chuck... What's the matter? Don't you understand English? Uh, oh, cut it out. Now, empty your pockets. Huh? Quit stalling. Turn them inside out. Oh, listen... Are you going to do like I say? Look, Chuck, uh, I don't want you to think that... Hey, you little rat. So you're holding out of me, huh? No, honest, I was going to split. Now, I... where'd you get this C-note? Hey. I found it. You're lying. Oh! Where'd you get it? You remember Marty Braddock? How could I forget if I ever lay my hands on it? Hey, wait a minute. You trying to tell me you ran into Marty? No, but I met his missus. Julie? Yeah. What do you know? It must have been real tickle to see you. What'd you do, follow her home? Yeah, I put the bite on her. Yeah. 
Marty must be doing okay if his wife can shell out a hundred clams. <laughs> Leave it to Marty. He's got a job at the Belmont Bank. He what? You know what I was figuring, Chuck? I bet he wouldn't mind a touch now and then to keep his old friends happy. Oh, you jerk. Is that all you can think of? Huh? Where's your imagination? Marty working for a bank, you expect me to be satisfied with a couple of bucks? Now, if you said a couple of thousand, that would be different. I don't get you. No, but Marty will. Get my coat. We're going bye-bye. Yes, sir? Can I help you? Uh, yes. Can you break this bill? Well, certainly. How would you like it? Oh, five, five, ones will be fine. Five, one, two, three. Uh, you Marty Braddock? Yes, that's right. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. My name is Mike Waring. Well, I'm very busy, Mr. Well, that's all Waring. Right. I... Bank is one of my clients. Uh, just close your window. Really, Mr. Waring, that's I... That's okay. It's official business. Suppose we go into Sinclair's office. Sure. Uh, better come around this way. May I ask what this is all about? You'll find out. I hope Mr. Sinclair isn't annoyed with me. Not yet, anyway. All right, sit down. Thanks. I don't know if you're familiar with what I do for the bank. Well, no, I... Well, I'm a private detective. One of my duties is to check personnel. I see. On the course of events, I sent your fingerprints to the FBI. I guess you know what they told me. Yes, I guess I do. Your application here doesn't mention anything about you serving five to ten for armed robbery back in 1945. All right, Waring, I won't take up any more of your time. Now, just a minute. What for? I've heard the spiel 20 times. I'm awfully sorry, Braddock, but naturally we can't afford to have an ex-con working for us. Isn't that how it goes? No, well, don't blame me. I'm just an innocent bystander. When did you get out? What difference does it make? Or just humor me. In 49. What have you been doing since? Getting kicked all over the place. You really been trying to go straight? Would you believe it if I said yes? Who knows? Look, if you get your kicks torturing people, that's swell, but I don't think I have... No, 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 I'm really interested. Well, I... I was 19 when I pulled that job in Buffalo. It was the only crooked thing I ever did. I threw in with a couple of boys... Yeah, I know, named... named Chuck Lewis and Willie Frank. How did you know? It's all down here. I see you're married. Yeah, three years ago. Has your wife known? Everything. I met her before I was sent up. And she waited? Yes. Well, sounds like quite a girl. How is she going to take this? The way she's been taking it all along, she won't complain. Look, Braddock, um, if I were to forget about this for a while... What? Could I trust you not to make me sorry? Listen, Waring, if you give me this break, I swear you'll never regret it. I hope not. Okay, fella, get back to work. All right, Willie. What do you got to say for yourself? Where's Marty? I swear that's where he works, Chuck. Funny, we didn't see him come out. Everybody else seen Yeah? Him. Well, what do you make of that? Okay, Willie. You wait here in the alley. You ain't gonna pull anything. Just wait. If you see anybody, sing out. Hey, buddy. Yeah? You got a match? Sure. Here, keep the book. Yeah. You always were a sport. Hmm? What's the matter, Marty? Don't you recognize me? No. I must have gained a few pounds. Chuck Lewis. <laughs> so you didn't forget. What are you doing here? The question is, what are you doing here? Since when do they employ ex-cons in banks? I don't work there. Ain't the way I heard it. Look, I don't care what you heard. Get out of my way. Take it easy, pal. You'll last longer. Know what I mean? So you still pack a gun, huh? You won't believe this, Marty, but this one's a present from your missus. What? Of course, in all fairness to Julie, she didn't know how we were going to spend the money. We? Oh, I forgot to mention, there's another friend of yours around... Willie Frank. Look, Chuck. to that alley. You're not going to get away with this. You're not going to get away with this. If I had a buck for every time I heard that, I could retire. Hey, Willie. Look who's here. Hiya, Marty. What are you fellas up to? 
We're going back in business. No, we're not. Well, you certainly wouldn't want the bank to find out they got an ex-con on the payroll. They know it already. Well, then that alters the case somewhat, but not enough. We're going to teach him it's not right to put temptation in your way. Now, me and Willie got a little plan. I'm not interested. Suppose I put it to you like this. What did you do? Keep out of the shoe. All right, Galahad, on your feet. You going to cooperate? No. I say you will. You wouldn't want anything to happen to your missus. What? As I recall, you're awfully sweet on that dame. I wonder if you'd like her as much if she had her face carved up. So help me, Chuck. If you touch Julie, I'll kill you. Oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> now get this and get it straight. You're going to play ball. Otherwise, you'll go home one night and find your wife a mess. You mean that, Marty? You're going to join the team? Yeah. Yeah, it's a spirit. Now get on home. We wouldn't want Julie to get nervous about you. You know how little it takes to make some women worry. Yeah. Let me take you. <gasps> Marty. It's all right, Julie. What happened? Nothing. How can you say that? Sit down. I'm going to call Dr. No, Wolf. no. But look at I you. I tell you, I'm all right. You're not. I've got a right to know what happened. I ran into a couple of old friends. Chuck and Willie? Yeah. It was my fault. I'd been careful. Willie never would have followed me. Well, how could you have even known he was in town? Julie, they want me to throw in with him again. You wouldn't. No? What do you suggest? They can't make any trouble for you. They can make you. plenty. But Mr. Waring knows about your record. Yes, but the bank doesn't. If Willie and Chuck went to the powers that be, I'd be out in the street in five minutes. No, you wouldn't. Look, who are we kidding? Can't you see old Sinclair's reaction when he learns he's got an ex-con in his temple of finance? It'd be the same old story all over again. All right, then you'll quit the job. Well, that won't satisfy Chuck. He said if I didn't cooperate, he'd... He'd what? Oh, never mind. Did he threaten you? I've got a right to know. Yeah. Julie, what are we going to do? You're going to do absolutely nothing. But... There are no buts about it. You leave it to me, darling. I'll think of something. Take it easy. You want to bust my eardrum? Well, how about a little service here? You want service? Try to Waldorf. Tony, how would you like me to come downstairs and give you a punch in the nose? Hey, who is this? Chuck Lewis. Oh. What's the matter, Chuck? Can't you take a joke? No. You see Willie Frank around? No, I ain't seen him all day. Well, when he comes in, you tell him I want to... Never mind. I think that's him. Oh! Oh, what was that? Hey, Chuck! Hello, Mike. Uh, Sergeant Corbett. <laughs> that brings you down to my little nest. What always brings me down? You. Why, Sergeant, I never dreamed you cared. You know, what's on your mind? You do some work for the Belmont Bank, don't you? That's right. How you doing there? They're satisfied. Guess it doesn't take much, huh? What are you talking about? Well, I thought it was your job to investigate all their employees. So? So you slipped up kind of badly. Did you know they had an ex-con on the payroll? No. You're lying. Now, look, Corbett. If you're referring to Marty Braddock... Uh-huh. Well, I figured the guy deserved a break. So you destroyed the report. How did you know that? Because I was down at the bank to see Mr. Braddock. One of his old associates was just knocked off, a feller named Chuck Lewis. No. I'm telling you, yes. And you think that Marty... I think it's highly suspicious Mr. Braddock didn't show up for work today. 
Well, what does his wife say? I haven't seen her yet. You mind if I join you? I insist on it. After all, when you did your good deed for Braddock, you paved the way for murder. All right, Boy Scout, let's go. As spring comes to America, all over the country, folks will be taking to the highway in their cars. That's part of the fun of owning a car, getting out on the road in the springtime and seeing the countryside. But when a lot of people get the same idea at the same time, it means crowded traffic conditions and increased danger. If you'd like to be safe, recognize what those dangers are. Speed, drink, and carelessness. Just drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Sergeant Corbett apprised Mike of the murder of Chuck Lewis. And now we find the two at the apartment of Marty Braddock, whom the sergeant is sponsoring as chief suspect. Well, looks like nobody's home. Well, what'd you expect? Well, maybe we better go in. Yes, I was just going to suggest that. Allow me. But five will get what you... What are you doing there? Huh? If you don't get away from that door, I'll call the police. Well, you won't have far to travel. This gent is one of them. You Julie Braddock? Yes. Well, this is Sergeant Corbin. My name is Mike Waring. Oh, so you're the one. Yeah, he's the one. Well, uh, what are you gentlemen doing here? Well, I think we better discuss that inside. What's wrong? Well, what makes you think anything is wrong? Did something happen to Marty? No, but something will. Where is he? That's what we'd like to know. I don't understand. Now, you better sit down, Julie. You've got to tell me. Did you ever hear of a man named Chuck Lewis? No. You're lying, Angel. I swear I didn't. Well, you should have. He was one of your husband's fraternity brothers. You leave my husband out of this. No, we can't. Chuck Lewis was murdered this afternoon. And you think Marty did? Yes. You're crazy. Then why did he disappear? Who says he did? Well, he didn't show up for work. Well, Maybe he went over to see his brother in Jersey. Oh, don't make me laugh. He could have. His brother had a heart attack last week. Maybe he took a turn for the worse. And Marty didn't say anything to you about it? He doesn't like to worry me. Just a real solicitous kid, ain't he? I swear that's the truth. Well, we'll see how it hits a jury. They can't hold him, can they, Mr. Waring? Well, that all depends. Was Marty in touch with Chuck? No. It'll be easy enough to find out. I give you my word, Marty hasn't seen him since he was sent up. Well, then how do you account for the fact we found your husband's business card on Chuck's body? That was my fault. I was in touch with him. Come again? I was out shopping last week and I ran into Willie Frank. Willie Frank? Yes, he was a friend of Chuck's. I gave him some money. But Marty knew nothing about it. Now, do you expect us to believe that? He had no motive. Oh, yes, he had Suppose Chuck was in touch with your husband. Suppose he threatened to go to the bank and tell them of Marty's past record. After all, this was Marty's big chance. He'd be peeved with anyone who tried to ruin it. I tell you, Marty didn't kill him. Well, then who did? Me. What? You heard me. I did it. You realize what you're saying? Yes. I went to that place where he was living this afternoon. I went in through the rear entrance. There's one right on... off third... Did anyone see you? No. Now, you're not buying this, are you, Mike? Well, that's an easy way to check. What did you do with the gun? I threw it in a sewer. Where? I can't remember. But it was somewhere along the bar. Now, that's a hot one. Why won't you believe me? Because it's obvious you're shielding your husband. Yes, it was a nice try, Mrs. Braddock, but I'm holding out for Marty. And since I can't depend on you to notify me when he comes in, I'll have a couple of boys downstairs who will. Hello? Hello, is that you, Waring? Yeah, who's this? This is Marty Braddock. What? Listen, Waring, I want to talk to you. Well, that makes us even, because I want to talk to you. 
I'll meet you at your apartment in 20 minutes. No, no, let's make it someplace else. There are a couple of squad cars parked in front of my door. I got a hunch there's something wrong. Something is. Where are you now? Did anything happen to my wife? No. You swear? Yep. Okay, I'm in a drugstore on the corner of 12th and 4th Avenue. All right, walk down to the corner of 12th and 5th. I'll come by in a blue Nash. Don't stop to admire the color. Just hop in. All right, Waring, what's up? What makes you think anything is up? There's too much hocus-pocus going on. What are the cops staked out in front of my house for? They're looking for you. Why? Don't you know? If I did, I wouldn't ask. Well, a friend of yours named Chuck Lewis met a violent end today. You mean he was murdered? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, who did it? Well, right now, the police are inclined to give you the honor. I swear I didn't do it. Why didn't you report for work this morning? I was on my way when I got a call from my brother's doc. He wasn't feeling so hot. So you went over to Jersey to see him? That's right. Without notifying Julie? Well, she was out shopping. So you didn't even think of leaving a note? I was too excited. Look, it's easy easy enough to prove. What what time was Chuck killed? 1.15. Well, you can check with my brother. I was there from 10.30 to 3. Was anybody else with you? No. I don't suppose your brother would mind perjuring himself to save your life. You've got to believe me. I tell you, I didn't kill him. Well, then that makes it look worse for Julie. What are you talking about? Well, I forgot to mention it, but uh, she confessed. She what? She claims she killed Chuck. Why, she's crazy. She didn't even know he was in town. She says she ran into Willie Frank one day who relayed the happy tidings. You don't believe that? Can't you see what she's trying to do? I got an idea. Look, look, Mr. Waring, I was lying. I, I did know Chuck was around. He he, he wanted me to throw in with him again. I, I was supposed to give him my answer today. So? So I, I... I gave it to him with a gun. You got the gun now? No. No, I... Uh, I, I got rid of it. Where? I, I threw it in the river. What about this alibi of yours? It's a phony. I had it all set with my brother in advance. Listen, Waring, you've got to believe me. Julie knew nothing about this. Well, if you say so. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? What I believe doesn't matter. The man you've got to convince is Sergeant Corbett. I'll arrange for you to have a crack at him. That's the story, Sergeant. I killed Chuck Lewis. Julie had nothing to do with it. Okay, that's good enough for me. You're going to let her go now, aren't you? Well, I'll think about it. All right, Haskell, take him away. Right, Sergeant. Will you do me a favor, Waring? Uh, sure, Marty. And... Tell Julie not to worry. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> now, that's what I call an optimist. Well, don't tell me you believe that confession. Well, I certainly do. What about his wife's? Well, her motive was obvious. She was trying to protect him. And he's trying to do the same for her. Oh, well, you're crazy. Well, how do you get around his alibi? What alibi? He admits he set it up in advance with his brother. You notice there was no one else around to substantiate the story. Well, I'm not satisfied. Sure, because you hate to admit this is all your fault. If you had notified the bank of his past record, none of this would have happened. Well, I thought he deserved a break. And he's going to get it. Right in the neck. Now, wait a minute. Aren't we forgetting someone? Who? Willie Frank. What about him? Why couldn't Willie have killed Chuck? Well, why should he? Chuck was a bully boy. Maybe Willie got fed up taking it. Oh, he's been palling around with a guy for 13 years, and now suddenly he gets fed up. (laughs) How convenient. Well, I still think it bears investigating. Well, you go ahead and investigate, Mr. Waring. I wouldn't stop you for the world. I got my boy right here. All right, come on, Willie, get up. Wake up, boy, you're late for reveille. Now rise and shine. Oh, cut it out, Chuck. Surprise, it ain't Chuck. Uh, huh? Who are you? The name is Waring, Mike Waring. You the one they call the Falcon? Why, can you think of something worse to call me? Come on, get up. Uh, what for? I ain't got no place. And I say you are. Ow! Leave me alone. I bet you missed that treatment since Chuck is gone. What do you know about his murder? You're nothing. They tell me you weren't around when he was killed. That's right. Where did you disappear to? None of your business. Don't give me that, you punk. Where were you? I don't remember. You don't remember. I must have been loaded. What did you have to celebrate? Chuck's death? What do you remember? Nothing. 
And you can't be sure you didn't kill him. Listen, mister, you got no right to come in here and push me around. Who do you think you are anyway? You said it yourself. I'm the falcon. I get dressed. We're going places. <laughs> Is that you, Haskell? No, it's only me, Sergeant. And look what I found. All right, you inside. Oh, let me go. Hey, what do you got there? Wish I could think of a suitable name. At the moment, it calls itself Willie Frank. Well, why did you bring him down for? Because this is where he belongs. Don't you, Willie? I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Well, if you had done a little investigating, as I suggested, you'd have discovered that Willie has no recollection of what he was doing at the time Chuck was murdered. Well, I have. Huh? You should have asked me. Willie spent the day right here. He was picked up for vagrancy at 11 a.m. But if he was in jail, he couldn't have killed Chuck. No, he couldn't. You know, you surprise me, Mike. I didn't think the one and only Falcon could fall flat on his face twice in one day. <laughs> but you did it, didn't you, boy? <laughs> now beat it. I got work to do. Can you stop in time? Ask yourself that question the next time you drive your car. If the car in front of you should jam on his brakes to avoid a stray dog, if a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, could you stop in time to save a life? Traffic accidents and death rates are still extremely high. Although improved conditions have brought about a 38% reduction in the overall traffic accident toll, more than 30,000 people will lose their lives in traffic accidents this year. So be careful. Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Ten minutes have passed since Mike Waring was informed that Willie Frank, his nominee for the murder of Chuck Lewis, was turned down. And now Mike goes to break the news to the surviving candidate. All right, Haskell, here's my pass. Open them up. Right, Mike. Waring. Hello, Marty. Did you see Julie? Nope, not yet. You've got to get her out. They promised to release her. Well, that's kind of impossible. You see, they never arrested her in the first place. They didn't? No. Sergeant Corbett never believed her confession. So you held out on me? Well, you held out on me. Why didn't you tell me you decided to throw in with Chuck and Willie? I wasn't going to. You're lying. All right, so I was. There was nothing else I could do. Then you intended to go through with that holdup? Yes. Look, I, I know I know you think I let you down, but I couldn't help myself. Couldn't you? No, it, it wasn't that I cared about the job or myself. I was afraid for Julie. Chuck threatened to go to work on her. Did she know that? No. Listen, Waring, the cops won't bother her anymore, will they? Not as long as you stick to that story that you killed, Chuck. Then why shouldn't I? On the other hand, why should you? Okay, Marty, maybe someday I'll figure out the reason. Hey, Haskell, I want out. Hello, Julie. Mr. War Waring. You uh, remember Sergeant Corbett? Of course. Hi. Where's my husband? Right where he belongs. You've got no right to hold him. He didn't kill Chuck. And he claims he did. He's lying. He's trying to protect me. I did it. What did you do with the gun? I told you I dropped it in a sewer somewhere along the bower. Oh, haven't we been through all this before? Yes, but this time, pay a little more attention. Detail a squad to make a search. What are you babbling about? She's telling the truth. Of course I am. Have you gone crazy, Mike? No, she did kill Chuck. Then you believe me? Yes, I do. Though I'd give the world not to. Well, come on. We'll take you down to headquarters. Stop somewhere for a beer, Mike? No, thanks, Sergeant. I don't feel like celebrating. Why not? You solved the case. Yeah, well, I'm almost sorry I did. I'd have given anything if I could have proved that Julie Braddock didn't kill Chuck. Why did she do it anyway? Well, she told the truth all along. 
She was crazy about her husband, and she thought Chuck represented the source of danger to him, so she put him away. Uh, it seems hard to believe. Well, your boys found the gun in the sewer along the Bowery. Yeah, yeah. That was the item that convinced me. What convinced you? Marty's confession. Well, it was no worse than hers. Oh, yes, it was. He admitted to me that in order to protect Julie, he agreed to throw in with Chuck and Willie and sticking up the bank. So? So that was his way of handling the matter. To him, it was the lesser of two evils. If he'd planned to go through with the hold-up, he certainly wouldn't have killed Chuck. The only reason he made that confession was because he knew Julie was guilty. I know this uh, doesn't sound official, but I hope the jury goes real easy on her. Aren't many dames around that would do what she did? No, and let's hope we don't run into another for quite a spell, because what this one did was murder. Well, good night, Sergeant. The Case of the Jumping Jack. The Case of the Jumping Jack. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when some jacks jump to conclusions, the results can be murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nora. Oh, I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Mm -hmm. Some boy I know just heard of a new way to commit murder. Naturally, being the inventive type, he's going to make a stab at it. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Jumping Jack. It's early afternoon in New York, and a lovely brunette named Dorothy Gould glances nervously over her shoulder as she walks down Madison Avenue. For Dorothy has a feeling she's being followed, and ten feet behind her is a stocky citizen who proves she's right. All right, you. What's the idea? Are you talking to me, sugar? Yes. Why are you following me? Offhand, I could think of a dozen reasons. Uh, but it so happens you're wrong. Oh, no, I'm not. I saw you get off the subway at 52nd Street. Not me. I'm strictly the cab type. You're lying. Who put you up to it? Hmm? It was my husband, wasn't it? Would you believe I have no idea what you're talking was about? Was it Jack? The only Jack I know is a fellow down in Norfolk, Virginia. Jack Paxton. Is that the one you mean? Now, look, I'm warning you. If you don't keep away from me... I suppose you'll call the police. Officer! Officer! Well, I guess that's my cue to beat it. Still, it's been fun, sugar. Let's do it again sometime. Four, one, one, three. Oh. Oh. Hello? Oh, Jean. Yeah? Dorothy. You know this isn't smart, Daddy. I couldn't help myself. I'm being followed. You what? Yes, it's been going on for days. You don't realize what you're saying. You've got to believe me. I'm not making this up. What did he look like? He was kind of short and stocky, and he was carrying a camera. A camera? You suppose he got a picture of us? I don't know. Listen, Jean, maybe we ought to tell Jack everything. But are you crazy? Well, he's going to find out eventually. Maybe eventually, but not now. Well, 
I've got to see you. Uh-uh, that's odd. Why? Because it's not safe. Especially if you're right about this character, Taylor. Uh, well, listen, Jean. Suppose I hire a private detective. What for? Because I've got to find out what's going on. Did you ever hear of a Mike Waring? Is he the one they call the fault? That's right. I'm going to talk to him. I wouldn't, Daddy. Well, I've got to do something. I'm going out of my mind. Now, look, honey, you're upset. Haven't I right to be? Yeah, sure. Sure, this has been a real strain. That's why I think you're imagining all no, this. No, I Now, am... look, baby, with ten million people in town, a couple are bound to look familiar. <sighs> oh, maybe you're right. Sure I am. Now, why don't you go home and relax? Well, when will I hear from you? Well, I don't know exactly, but I'll keep in touch. <sighs> all right, take care of yourself, darling. Yeah, you too. Are you through with that phone, sugar? Oh, no. Well, what's the matter, lady? You act like you're seeing a ghost. You are following me. I never saw you before in my life. I am warning you. Now, take it easy, Mrs. Gould. How did you know my name was Gould? How did I know what? You called me Mrs. Gould. Hey, you're not only seeing things, but you're hearing them, too. <laughs> if I were you, sugar, I'd see a doctor. <laughs> Yes? I'm looking for Mike Waring. Oh, congratulations. What? You've made it. Oh, oh, are you... Yes, I am. Come in. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Dorothy Gould. Mm-hmm. Oh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. A drink? No. You better change your mind, Angel. You look like you could stand it. There we are. Well, I... Now, how long has it been going on? How long has what been going on? What it was bothering you. Well, what makes you think anything's bothering me? Would you be here if there weren't? Oh, well, I'm being followed, Mr. Waring. By whom? That's just the trouble I don't know. Well, what does he look like? He's kind of stocky, and he's got red hair. Mm, does he have a southern accent? How did you know? He's a large brother of mine. What? He's a private detective named Dixie Hamilton. Oh, I see. Have you any idea who hired him? No. You married? Yes, why? Well, that would open up a flood of possibilities. What about your husband? What about him? You think he's behind it? That's what I want you to find out. If Jack is responsible for this, I will leave him so fast it'll make his head swim. Is he the jealous type? Unfortunately. Does he have reason? How dare you? Now look, Dorothy. It is Mrs. Gould. Yes. Well, I always like to maintain a first-name relationship with my clients. I find it's a great time saver. And does your husband have any justification to believe you are seeing some man on the side? I tell you, there's no one. Yet we know for a fact that someone sick Dixie Hamilton on you. You think he followed you here? I didn't see him. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he's playing it cozy. All right, now here's what I want you to do. When you leave, walk down to the corner. Wait there for about five minutes. That'll give Dixie... If it is, Dixie, a chance to pick up the scent. Then what do I do? And hail a cab and go home. And what about... Dixie, I'll take care of him. Now, on your way, Angel. We don't want to keep the man waiting. Taxi! Taxi! Madison and 84th, please. Hey, cab! Cab! Can I give you a lift, Dixie? Huh? I got a subway park in Lexington. Look, where in? I'm busy. Yes, but you southerners have a reputation for taking things easy. Why don't we go somewhere and have a drink? Let go of my arm. How does a mint julep strike you? You ain't kidding me. I don't understand you, Dixie. I just thought we might have a little talk. Read any bad books lately? This ain't going to help her one bit. Help who? Dorothy Gould. I'll pick her up again. Well, I wish you wouldn't. You're annoying the lady. She's going to be a lot more annoyed before I'm through. Well, that's too bad. Who are you working for? None of your business. Come on, Dixie, break down. You going to let go of my arm? Okay, but you keep out of her hair. Sorry, Warren. I only take orders from my client. And he may want me to give her a new Tony. I'll be seeing you, boy. <laughs> Mr. Gould. 
Last I saw your missus, she was in a cab headed uptown. Why didn't you follow her, Dixie? I was rather forcibly detained. But you were right about her. She is playing around. You're fine. Cut it out. Admit it. You made this whole story no, up. No, I... So help me, I'll kill you if you don't tell me the truth. I, I am now. Let me go. Why, you knew all along she was cheating. You shut up. Well, you must have. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come to me. Who's the man? It's a fellow named Mike Waring. Mike Waring? How do you know? Take a look at this picture. Well? That's where he lives. I followed her there. Who is he? A private dick. Well, what would Dorothy want with him? Why don't you ask her? I've got a better idea. I'll ask him. Beat it. I've got work to do. Yeah? You Mike Waring? That all depends. On what? On who's looking for him. Now, if the party is loaded... Come again? Well, isn't that a gun in your pocket? You're so right. I wish I weren't. Shut the door. Yeah, since you put it so nicely... So you're the boy, huh? I'm what boy? You know what I'm talking about. Well, believe me, I haven't the vaguest notion. Suppose I told you I was Jack Gould. Mean anything to you? Yeah, it means a lot. You must be the one who hired Dixie Hamilton to shadow Dorothy. Looks like I made a smart buy. I don't think so. How long have you been romancing my wife? Oh, you're crazy. How long has it been going on? I asked you something, Wary. I wouldn't try that again. You're Dorothy. Tried to make a fool out of me, didn't you? Don't give us credit, Ghoul. You did it all on your own. I'll kill you for this. Don't talk like a jerk. You got it all wrong. I suppose you can explain everything. Yes, I can. Though I don't know why I should bother. Well, I'd enjoy hearing it. Not that it's going to make any difference. Your wife just saw me on business. Don't make me laugh. She knew Dixie was following her, and she wanted me to find out who was responsible. Well, now we know. Yeah. Now you know. But I can't take any bows. You made it real easy for us by coming here. You expect me to swallow that? I don't care whether you do or don't. I'm working for your wife. Is that all you've got to say? You don't believe me, do you? Sure, you hated to find out you've been acting like a chump. That's enough out of you. All right, now put down the gun, ghoul. It won't do you any good. The safety's on. What? Now look at it. What are you talking about? My mistake. Stop! Let go! Come on, drop it. I'll break it if you don't behave. All right, now kick it in the corner. Stay where you are while I get it. Where'd you get this gun, anyway? None of your business. You know you could hurt somebody with this? Okay. Go ahead. What? Well, aren't you going to shoot me? You could always claim you thought I was a thief. And then you and Daddy... No, stop talking like an idiot. I tell you, the relationship between your wife and myself was purely professional. You don't have to lie anymore. You got the gun. Look, I don't know why I should try to sell you, but I saw your wife for the first time today. She was scared stiff. Is that on the level? Yes, it is. Now, you can take it or leave it. It's all the same to me. But I thought... No, you didn't think. That's your trouble. I... You're going to tell her about this? Of course I am. I have to. I'm oh, working please, for her. Please, please don't. Uh, she'll leave me if she finds out. Listen, Waring. I'll give you a thousand dollars. No, it's no if, dice, school. But you don't understand. If she, if she yes? To... Uh, hello, uh, I'd like to speak to Dorothy Gould, please. Who wants her? Just tell her it's Mike Waring. Well, why don't you come over and tell her yourself? Uh, not that it'll do any good. Who is this? Sergeant Corbett. What are you doing there, Corbett? Well, I ain't minding the store. Uh, were you working for Mrs. Gould? Yes. Well, you better apply for unemployment insurance. You're entitled to it. What are you babbling about? You're out of a job. The dame was knocked off an hour ago. Unbelievable as it may sound, accidents on the nation's highways in the last 10 years have killed more than 300,000 Americans like you and me. What's more, they have injured no fewer than 11 million men, women, and children crippling several million of these victims for life. To get the significance of those figures, try to visualize a great fleet of automobiles, trucks, buses, and other vehicles moving into the city of Jacksonville, Florida, 
and killing every person there in a decade. Simultaneously, three other vast cavalcades of juggernauts move into Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Boston, and all of their suburbs, working so systematically that in 10 years, every last man, woman, and child of the 10,962,000 people in these three great metropolitan centers would be injured during these fantastic and horrifying sieges of mobile mayhem. That is the meaning of the highway accident casualty figures of the last decade. Help to protect your own life and the lives of your family by driving safely. Work for greater highway safety for yourself and for your family in your own community and state. And whenever you take the wheel of your own car, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since oh, Mike Waring learned of Dorothy Gould's yeah, death. And oh, now in the murdered woman's apartment. Got a minute, Sergeant? Yeah, just about. Now, you boys carry on, will you? Well, what's the scoop? Well, that ain't pretty. She was stabbed 13 times. Any one of them could have done the trick. Uh, what was your deal with her? Oh, well, she was being tailed. She wanted to know who was behind it. Well, did you find out? Yes, him. Her husband. That's right. Mr. Gould? Yes? I'd like to see you. Can't it wait? Uh, I'm sorry. What do you want? Waring here tells me you were having your wife followed. I was. Why? Well, I suspected her of seeing some man. But I was right. This wouldn't have happened if she wasn't. What's his name? He thought it was Mike Waring. Was it? Don't be a fool. Hey, Sergeant, can we move the body? No. Uh, anytime you're ready. No, no, you mustn't. You can't take her away. Now, look, go. I won't let you. She belongs to me. Easy, fella. Leave her here. Please. Give it just a few minutes. Well, that won't do any good. All right, Haskell, carry on. All right, Sergeant. Listen, hey, Miles, give me a hand. Waring. Uh, Waring, you've got to find the man she was seeing. There wasn't any. No, you're wrong. I know she was. He's responsible for this. Okay, okay, I'll do what I can. Easy now. Can I go with him, Sergeant? Well, let oh. him, Corbett. Okay. Haskell, take Mr. Gold along. Thanks, Sergeant. You won't regret this. What do you think, Mike? He was really crazy about her. Yeah. Uh, got any idea who killed her? Nope. Uh, got any idea, period? Yeah, one. I'll let you know if it pays off. Hey, waiter. Waiter, how about a little service here, huh? Well, what are you complaining about, Dixie? You're getting as little as possible. What are you doing here, Ware? Uh, it's a long story. Say, why don't I sit down? Because you weren't invited. Now, now, where's that vaunted southern hospitality? I left it in Norfolk. Uh, that's a pretty nice spot. But did you hear what happened on 86th Street in Little Old New York? No, tell me. Dorothy Gould was murdered. Think of that. Well, you're taking it pretty calmly. People die every day. Yes, but not quite so violently. She was stabbed 13 times. That just proves my daddy was right. He always said 13 was an unlucky number. Well, I never thought of it that way. When did you go to work for Jack Gould? None of your business. Oh, that's where you're wrong. It is my business. I'm working for him now. Why, the dirty skunk. Well, you can't blame him for canning you, Dixie. After all, you flopped pretty miserably. You never did find the boy she was seeing. I thought it was you. Yeah, you know better than that. Why did you hold out on Gould? You're the smart one. You tell me. All right. Was it because you figured I'm playing both ends against the middle? How's that? Suppose you're planning a little shakedown. You know, keep the other man's name out of the picture in return for coin of the realm. Hey, that's a thought. Yeah, well, I'd forget it. A woman's been murdered, Dixie. Now, if you know anything... You want me to cut you in? How do you think you'd look without those pearly white teeth? I wouldn't start anything, Warren. I got a lot of friends here. You wouldn't care to step outside? What for? This suits me fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dixie, I'll see you around. I doubt it. No, I'm going to make it my business. Take care of yourself, fella, until I get a chance to. Who is it? Hello, Gene. 
So who the devil are you? You don't know it yet, but I'm a friend of yours. You what? Well, I wouldn't hold out on the cops for everyone. Is that bourbon you're drinking? Put that down. Uh, surely you don't begrudge a pal or we drop. Who are you? Oh, that's right. I haven't introduced myself. My name's Dixie Hamilton. I'm a detective. Detective? Uh, maybe I should have said a private detective. What do you want here? Money. You're crazy. I don't think so, Gene. You know a girl named Dorothy Gould? No. That's funny. Because I got a picture of you two. That's a dilly. I thought maybe you'd be interested in buying it. Why should I? Well, then I won't have to sell it to her husband. Seems he suspicioned his wife was meeting some boy on a sly, and I got a shot that proves he was right. Where is it? Right here. You like to see it? Yeah. Ain't it a beaut? Look at the detail. You notice how that mustache is going? Now, why did you want to do that for? Get out. You're putting me to a lot of trouble, Gene. Now I've got to run off another print. Huh? You don't know much about photography, do you? You see, once you've got a negative, you can run off a million copies. Where's, uh, where's the negative? Now that's going to cost you dough. Five grand, to be exact. Where's that negative? Just for that, it's going to cost you ten. Is it? No, let me alone. I'll let you alone. No. I'm going to get that negative if I have to kill you. <laughs> and, brother, that's just the way I'd like. No. Look, Gould, don't you think you've had enough? I'll never have enough. I'll always see her lying there with the blood. All right, all right, stop it. You've got to put that out of your mind. I can't. Why haven't you been able to find the man? Because there is none. Oh, you're wrong. Look, did it ever occur to you that you might have been doing Dorothy an injustice? She's dead, isn't she? Well, yes. Then there must be someone. Believe me, I'd give anything in you the world. You want me world. to get that? Please. I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah, sure. Hello. Uh, let me speak to Jack Gould, please. I'm sorry, he's out. Well, when do you expect him back? Well, there's no telling, Dixie. What'd you call me? Well, isn't this Dixie Hamilton? No. I can't believe there could be two such accents in the country. Who is this? Mike Waring. Listen, Waring, suppose I told you the name of the boy Dorothy Gould was seeing. What would you do? Well, first, I'd wonder why you were so good to me. I got my reason. What's the matter, Dixie? Wouldn't your other customer buy? Get smart and I'll hang up. You'll never get even that way. Who is he? Come on, Dixie. I'll take care of him for you. His name is Gene Saunders. He lives to bright. Well, thanks, fellow. Much obliged. Who is that? Dixie Hamilton. Well, Ghoul, looks like you were right. There was someone else. Who is he? His name is Gene Saunders. I'm going over to see him now. I'm going with you. No, no. We've had one murder already. That's par for the course. Let's leave well enough alone. Yeah? Eugene Saunders? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. Is that supposed to mean something? I was hoping it would. You see, I was working for Dorothy Gould. Of course, now I'm employed by her husband... What are you mumbling about? Well, he suspected she was seeing some man on the side. Looked like he was right, huh? Listen, Waring, if you don't get out of here... Well, look, why don't we go together? You ever been down to police headquarters? Where do you mind? What's the idea of the gun? Well, what do you think? I think you mislaid your knife. And for your information, you left it in Dorothy. What did you say? I think I've said enough. And I think you haven't even started. No! Now begin at the top of the page and don't leave out a sentence. Because every time you do, you're going to get one of these. Every day last year on the highways, an average of 103 Americans like yourself or those in your family were killed in automobile accidents. But a lot of highway deaths don't seem to bother us much unless someone in our own family is killed. We are shocked, however, and do become excited when an occasional disaster or catastrophe strikes and claims a large toll of life. 
Why? If a tornado over which man has no control strikes several states and kills 100 or 200 people, is that disaster any worse than 100 or 200 Americans being killed in a single day in automobile accidents? The daily toll of 103 deaths in traffic accidents is America's greatest shame because that toll is repeated year after year by an apathetic nation when it can be greatly lessened. You can do your part in helping to fight this disaster on the highways by being a safer driver and by working in your community and state for strict law enforcement that means safer traveling for all of us. At all times, you must remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two hours have passed since Mike Waring tried to argue with a gun in Gene Saunders' apartment with the usual results. Oh, my head. Well, ain't that ironical. First time you use it in a week, and look what it gets you. Oh, shut up, Sergeant. Oh, that's a nice snappy ad lib. Oh, how did you know where to find me? I saw Jack Gould. He told me you got a lead to the boy his wife was seeing. Well, he told you right. How long will it take you to pick him up? Who? It's Gene Saunders, of course. Well, that all depends on what we want him for. Oh, for Pete's sake, Corbett. What's the matter with you? Don't you get it yet? Maybe I'm thick. What do you mean, maybe? Well, Dorothy was seeing Saunders in the QT. Maybe she had a reason. Of course she had a reason. She didn't want her husband to find out about it. Suppose I told you this Gene Saunders was an ex-con. Well, that makes it all the more binding. Then you might let me finish. He served five to ten at Sing Sing for armed robbery. He got out six months ago. Sure, without a dime to his name, I bet. Yeah. And from what we've been able to piece together, Dorothy was supporting him. Well, you are. That wraps it up. I don't see how. He got nervous when he heard her husband was having a tail, so he killed her. Oh, why should he? He was afraid she'd give him away. Uh, why don't you ask me Dorothy's maiden name? Well, what difference does that make? It might make a lot. It was Saunders. Saunders? You mean she and Jean were brother and sister? Oh, you had a beautiful theory there, Mike. Ain't it a shame their parents had to ruin it for you 30 years ago? I don't understand it, Waring. I don't understand it at all. Well, I can't blame you, Ghoul. Threw me for a loss, too. But this man Dorothy was seeing was her brother, Gene. But why didn't she tell me? Well, I can think of one good reason. What would be your reaction if you learned your wife's brother was a graduate of Sing Sing? You wouldn't let her see him, would you? Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. Not with your makeup. You wouldn't want it noised around that your brother-in-law was an ex-con. Listen, Waring, there's some mistake. I wouldn't be surprised if you were right. There must be another man in the picture. Who? What about Dixie Hamilton? No, you're reaching, pal. Well, why else would he give me your name? Because he was being playful. No, no. He did it to protect himself. He must have been the one. Still trying to justify yourself, aren't you? What? You've got to believe there was somebody. Otherwise, you committed murder for nothing. What are you talking about? You killed Dorothy. You're crazy. You never trusted her from the day you were married. What's the matter? Didn't you think you were man enough to hold her? That's not true. You wanted to be convinced she was deceiving you. You were begging for her. You're wrong. When Dixie reported to you that I was the boy, that's all you needed. No. Oh, yes. You could have pulled a name out of a hat and you would have been satisfied. No. I bet you couldn't wait for her to come home well, so you could accuse her. Well, you don't understand. I love Dorothy. Sure you did, but you killed her just the same. What? I can see her backing off, terrified, and you well, following her with that knife. Don't, Every time she tried to get away. Don't, don't, Am I right? Please. Am I right? Please. Yes. I killed her. I killed her. <laughs> Let me alone. Let her be alone. You know, Mike, you could have knocked me over with the Empire State Building when you walked in with Jack Gould. Well, I was kind of surprised myself. <laughs> well, I have to give him credit. <laughs> Certainly put up a wonderful act. No, that was no act, Sergeant. Hmm. Why the devil did he do it? All seems infected that the infected spy is all seems yellow to the jaundiced eye. Alexander Pope. 
Oh, very pretty. What's it mean? <laughs> Just what it says. To a guy like Gould, everything his wife did seems suspicious. He was born that way. But he, he claimed there was another man. Naturally. He had to justify himself. Uh, you think he really loved her? In his fashion. But when that fashion leads to murder, it's never in style. Good night, Sergeant. The Case of the Weeping Willow. The Case of the Weeping Willow. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that sometimes blood is easier to spill than tears. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon, with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking.